Hello everyone, it's me and yes, I'm back with a video that quick. This is going to be more of an addendum. Consider it an extension of the video that I just did on the PB, PBA. I should make that president. I was a little um, incorrect in my information. It's the New York State Police Benevolence Association's president, Michael O. Omira in that video, right? But I wanted to, to add a little more information, right? Because as he says in the video, he says in the video that uh, we don't do that here, right? And I've explained why I disagree with his statement. But, you know, there's this thing that people say, right? The protest right now or for George Floyd and others, right? Say his name, say his name and all that. Or, or Breonna Taylor, right? Say her name. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say the names of people who, this is just a, but a small sampling, but a small sampling of people who have been the victims in one way or another of uh, New York City PD, NYPD, Police Department corruption and misconduct. Now this comes from Wikipedia, but from what I can tell, it's pretty legit, right? Many of these cases I've read about, many of them I was alive for, like again, the Amadou Diallo thing, the Abner, the Wima thing. So I'm going to go over their names. And keep in mind, the earliest case here starts in like the mid-1960s, so we are talking decades. And this is just but a taste of what can happen when there is corruption and misconduct uh, and bad things happen with police. One second. <laughs> so anyways, I would say I'm going to read off this list now. The arrest of Frank Lino, mid-1960s. The shooting of Clifford uh, Glover. Clifford Glover was a 10-year-old boy. And a cop shot him because he had a gun in his hand. 10 years old. <laughs> Beating death of Israel Rodriguez. Shooting of Randolph Evans. Chokehold of Michael Stewart. Shooting of Eleanor Bumpers. Eleanor Bumpers was killed in the, the mid-1980s. She was a NYCHA resident who was mentally ill. What should have happened was that the police should have had a mental health professional and uh, marshals there since she was being evicted, supposedly. She had been accused of not paying her rent. Guess what? She really had paid the rent. She just didn't know that there was a rent increase, right? There was violence and the police shot her. <laughs> then there's the Stun gun coercion of Mark Davidson. There's the shooting of Ed Edmund Perry, which may be about out of all of these, maybe the only one where I would say, okay, the cop actually did act in self defense. So I'll give you that one. But the shooting of Jose Garcia, the choking of Anthony Baez, the sodomy of Abner Luima, which I have mentioned in several videos, the shooting of Amadou Diallo, as I have mentioned in, another, in other videos, the shooting of Patrick. Dorisman, uh, the shooting of Osman Zongo, right? The racial mailings of Thomas Papas, the shooting of Timothy Stansberry, the shooting of Sean Bell, right? There's the arrest of Michael Primo. There's the shooting of Ramarley Graham, the death of Kyrim Livingston, the beating of Alexian Lien, the, the chokehold of Eric Gardner. The arrest of Ramsey Orta, the shooting of Akai Gurley, as I mentioned in another video, that was the accident, accidental shooting committed by Peter Liang, right? And many, 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 many other cases. Those are but a few. And they run the gamut from the mid-60s to not even 10 years ago. Some of these people, hell, even most of these people, were not saints. They were not... Uh, people who didn't have criminal records, didn't have a, a, a bad background. But that does not give the police the right to treat them the way that they did. And, and here's something that, I, that I, I, I want to make clear that I think it gets lost in all this protesting. There's so much focus on the death that people do not mention that even if all these people had lived, and many of them that I listed died, some of them lived, like for example, Abner, Loima, he didn't die from his injuries, right? But most of them died. Most of them end, end up being, being killed. And of course, we know that Breonna Taylor was killed. George Floyd was killed. Many of them were killed. 
right? But here's the thing. Even if all these people, then and now, were to survive their attacks, right, their injuries, what happened was still wrong. What still happened was a violation of the law. The police are not supposed to treat anyone this way. Shooting deaths should, should be something you almost never hear about. And the fact that we hear about them so frequently, in, in, even giving consideration to the fact that, yes, media totally, totally, uh, uh, what's what I'm looking for, Sen sensationalizes it, right, to support a certain uh, viewpoint and a certain message. Yes, they do, not denying that. But I'm also not going to, d to deny the fact that these uh, incidents happen. These are all real crimes. These were all real people, many, many of which who lost their lives, and even for the ones who didn't die. What happened to them never, never should have happened to them. For example, we don't say that a person is raped only if they die. We don't consider it a rape only if, only if the victim dies. No, rape, which is using sex as a weapon, is illegal, regardless of whether or not the victim lives or dies. And many of these officers in these cases were acquitted or they were given incredibly light sentences. This is the problem with the New York City Police Department. It is not new. It is not something that has just happened within my 35 years. It's something that at least, at least, dates back to when my mother was born in the mid-60s. And you wonder why black people in New York City fear the cops. This is a generational thing. It is something that keeps on and on and on because nobody ever wants to work to freaking change it. And that is one of the many problems. If the, let me get his name again. If the PBA president, Michael O'Meara, I think it is. Yeah, Michael O'Meara, right? <laughs> if the PBA president, Michael O'Meara, wants to start to change things, then I think he needs to reach out to the families of all these victims, right? Even, if, even the, the Frank Lima case, which goes back to the mid-60s. If there's anybody from those families left in the city, reach out to them, talk about what happened, and ask what can be done to make sure that this happens less. Stop acting as if the cops were never wrong. Stop acting as if the, the, the cops never deserve any sort of criticism. Stop acting as if the cops are always in the right, because they're not always in the right. They are wrong sometimes. They are flat out evil sometimes. And when you constantly protect good cops, so, sorry, when you, when you constantly protect the bad cops and the bad apples as fiercely as you protect the good cops, you do nothing but hurt yourself, hurt us, and make the situation even worse. So if, if the PBA president truly cares about New York City, black lives, brown lives, Chinese lives, white lives, Irish lives, or anything else, Maybe, just maybe, he'll actually try to look inside and see what the issues are and try to mitigate them instead of acting as if the, the issues don't exist. Because this goes back generations. Anyhow, that's the video. It might be the last video for the day. I don't know, but I, I think it's the last video I'm going to be making at least today talking about this. I'm sweaty. I'm hot. My hair is fuzzy. And I will see you all around. So again, have a good day, everybody. Bye.